Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, hello, hello. So today, I'm super excited. This is the first, well, that's not true. I was gonna say it's the first open source stream we've had in like 10 forevers, uh, but that's not true at all. Um, we've we've actually done, let me set this to charge. Can you, can you tell I just got back from a walk? Please hold. But I was like, okay, let's uh, let's go for a walk before our first sh open source stream in, in 10 forevers. I'm saying that and I just realized that I totally did one six weeks ago <laughs> <laughs> about my very first uh, my very first poll with Cockroach DB. I was so proud. Um, let me share my screen. So what we're doing today is this blog. And they were like, it'll be easy, they said. Uh, but one of the very first lines <laughs> is to follow this tutorial, you just need to know some JavaScript time to dive in. And I was like, mm, my JavaScript is old. Let's see what happens. So I've, I've, looked i forked the github repo by the way you just click fork in the upper right hand corner and it's already forked over to my thing my uh github repo which is rainlander um just because i wanted to poke around i wanted to make sure i was down the right path you can see that amruta went through this my colleague oh <laughs> i should probably do an introduction because it's been a while hey <laughs> Uh, by the way, I'm Rain Leander. I am a developer advocate here at Cockroach Labs. And every Friday, new time, new place, every Friday morning, I think, it'll be like 11 a.m. Eastern time. Today we're starting at 11.30. We're going to do something open source. I'm thinking of switching this because I have a pattern, which is that I go to an open source project and I and I play. I just check out their getting started guide usually. And we don't need to share my screen while I'm doing this. And I'm thinking of renaming it to something like Say What? <laughs> uh, because I also want to include blog posts, things like this. Um, yeah. And, and we'll just see what happens. Hey, Adrian. <laughs> uh, welcome to your cloudy chance of rain. Cloudy with a chance of rain. Or, or I'll do cloudy with a chance of rain. What? No, but so, so today is no different. I am doing a Node.js. This GitHub repo is already online um, and is open source. The OG is. Um, I'm of course going to keep the license. It's Apache. And can y'all? <laughs> Cloudy with jeans free. And apparently my screen is blurry. I can see it kind of. It is totally blurry. This is the monitor that was super clear. Like I specifically switched out all my monitors. But no, it is pissed. Let's see if we can fix it. Good morning, Air Developer. Happy Friday to you. Let me see if I can get a better screen. Why do I suddenly have two cameras? Look at this, I have two cameras. Who's that? <laughs> Why do I have two cameras? Stop it. I don't know. Go away. Oh, I know who that is. That's Dan. Okay. Hi, Dan. Yeah, let's talk about this fuzzy screen. Fuzzy screen. Why are you fuzzy? Let's see if we can make it better by just showing a tab. Well, that's prettier. <laughs> I know. Hi. 
I know. I so I just shifted the camera, so it's following a couple of bookshelves and less about the couch of doom. Um, but yeah, it's the same. It's the same me. I promise. Here we go. What? Okay. But yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, my producer is, is like, I think you changed which screen you were sharing. So I, I specifically tried to avoid the fuzzy screen by switching out my monitors completely. This is the monitor that was playing well last time. Um, that is not playing well now. It looks better to me. Let me make sure. No, it's still totally fuzzy. Why are you fuzzy? Why are you fuzzy, buddy? And I'm clear, but <laughs> I don't want to not stream just because I can't, but you like pretty much have to be able to see my screen today. And it's not just, yeah, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> you can be skeptical. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I know. I could just be like, I yeah, I, I'll just tell you what happens. But um, I could also do a recording, a screen recording later and see if I can get it fixed. Also, also fun time today uh, is... A uh, half day for my six-year-old who's in first grade here in America. Um, <laughs> everything is super fun. It's fun. This is fun. Um, and it's a half day and he's getting, he's getting out of school in exactly 20 minutes. And so he will come home and then my partner will he'll be put in front of an iPad and my partner has a lunch meeting that he has to go to. So theoretically, a six-year-old could join me on screen at any time. Um, but let's just see if we can fix the screen. I'm just going to play, see if any other windows are playing better. I'm also going to close like a lot more <laughs> windows than I normally do. You're pretty. You go. And you go away. And you go away. And we're closing you. We're closing you. We're closing you. Let's see if that makes this particular screen happier. Things you learn. Why? Oh, that's worse. <laughs> cool. Cool, 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 cool. Stop sharing. So for me, it looks better if I share just a tab within Chrome. Can I share a whole window? Nope. Let me change the shape of it a little. No. Like, look at that. Look how mad it is. And like, I don't think it's the browser either. That's a little happier. Let's get rid of that. Today's stream will be about how to stream and share your screen. Yes, exactly. Actually, actually, good call. Let's um, let's see what this monitor is doing on a Mac. System preference. I'm going. By the way, I'm going Apple System Preferences displays, and I'm just checking the res the resolution on these. Brightness is great. Could be brighter. The display is standard rotation. 
Let's change. Oh, am I still live? Can you still see me? <laughs> By changing my hurts? The camera keeps blinking. I don't even know. Okay, Adrian says he can still see me. Cool, cool, cool. Um, wow, this just got tiny. Am I still here? Do I still exist? Whoa. <laughs> Every time I, I'm like, am I still here? Okay. So all I did was change the refresh rate up to 24 hertz. Let's try that without changing anything else. Oh, man, come back. There we go. This is screen three. This is the one that's, did it hurt? Oh my God, you were so fired. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Mm -mm. It, it totally hurts. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to try the, Default for display resolution. And try sharing that. This is the scientific method in live. Man. Why are you so mad? Oh, it changed. I don't think I should do that while sharing but I should share screen in between. What if I just shared the... What does that look like? See, even the default, so... What's wrong with you? Why are you weird? Why? But if I share, I'm so glad. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> if I share just the tab, even the tab is gross. All right, let's just let's just go over to see if. We can put this on the laptop or anything. We've got three different monitors. Just start, I'll just start playing. I mean, as if we're already playing. Entire screen, screen one does not look good. Yeah, okay, so totally. Oh, dang it. Uh, yeah, so this is laptop screen, just as bad. So that's cool. Thank you for your question, Raymond. Uh, what advantages does CockroachDB have over Postgres and MySQL? So uh, MySQL first of all, is a relational database. And while CockroachDB is also, you know, uses SQL, it is a relational database. It's specifically made to be multi-platform, to scale very easily. Uh, you don't have to know about sharding, stuff like that. So it's, it depends on your experience with MySQL Postgres as to how much of an advantage and also what your platform is, what your application is going to be using and what kind of performance you want out of your database. But today is supposed to be about building an application in Node.js. Raymond, thank you for the question. And 
kind of programming with JavaScript. <laughs> Can you get my screen to work? Because otherwise I will not be programming with JavaScript today. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I moved everything over. It still doesn't like um, sharing the whole screen. If I share just the window of Chrome, same thing. If I share the tab, it's better, but still fuzzy. I'm clear, so. <laughs> and then finally, we can go onto my rotated monitor, which I'm going to rip, restream off of, put it on a different monitor. This doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense. None of this makes sense. And if if this is the monitor that works, y'all, it's going to hurt my hand. Thanks, Raymond. I hope it works. <laughs> I hope we get our screens working. Um, literally, I've been streaming all week just fine until now. Now this, actually, let me change the, uh, this, this monitor that I'm looking at right now, it's, it's rotated 270 degrees. So it might be kind of pissed at the ratio. So let's, there, I made it a little bit more readable. It's clear for me. Is it clear for y'all? Y'all, is it clear for y'all? <laughs> Seriously, is it clear for y'all? Restream is supposed to make it super easy. That's what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, Adrian. Thank you. Okay. So I feel like I want to take a break and go eat chocolate. <laughs> Thank you. That's when today's tutorial is just getting your stream share working. Okay, cool. Uh, so that happens. Um, I'm going to also move my terminal over here. I'm going to also see if I can share the... This is... Let's see what happens when I share the whole screen. It's gonna freak out. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> see, it's rotated. Okay. Does it? Could we do this? Oh, uh, no, no, we cannot. Stop it! Stop it! All right. So we're just gonna share one window at a time, and then when we need to go. <laughs> <laughs> the shade of it all. Yeah. So when we need to go over and, and actually um, go to terminal and like, no, no way. Okay, good. It's still fine. <laughs> I thought it was bad again. I was about to cry. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. I'm just going to move my terminal down below. So, so that's this. Wow. Can we take a minute to just breathe? <sighs> yes. So that's what we're doing today. Yes. Hi, programming with JavaScript. We're actually doing this. I need, like, this is just water and it's 11.50 in the morning. I need a minute. To take a break. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. I got energy. I've got energy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you. That's where we are. Okay. 
I need a minute. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, I don't know, like I need a cigarette or something. It's, it's, it's Friday though, y'all. It's Friday. <sighs> okay, so now I will admit this is throwing me off just a little. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, Andre. Good to see you. Welcome. You've got this. Thank you. It has been a week. Seriously. It. <sighs> like, can we take a, a cry for a minute? Can we? Okay. So, super happy to actually be sharing my screen. Yay. Um, this, can, can we start over? <laughs> um, this is an open source stream. Today we are building a full start Node.js app with CockroachDB. Node.js JavaScript is open source. The app is online and with a open source license. Um, Amrita Renaud did this the first time. Um, and I have forked this, which I think is, yeah, there we go. There's my fork. So I forked it specifically because I wasn't sure. Maybe I just wanted to take this, the, the files down and then adjust them for my username and password and stuff like that. Um, so, but I do typically fork a project that I'm about to, um, specifically run locally and whatnot. So, so that's why I forked it. Um, I also went ahead and did some of the installations and because I just switched over from being a contractor for Cockroach Labs to being a full-time employee, which means I got a new laptop instead of a refurbished laptop, I had never installed Brew. <laughs> so I found all, all kinds of new things happened this morning. Um, also caveat programming with JavaScript. I'm so glad you're here because, uh, I played with JavaScript in like the late nineties, early two thousands, and it's been a while. And so when I saw you just need to know some JavaScript, I was like, Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. So <laughs> a whole blue world. Bum, 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 bum. thank you. Fantastic. Okay, so we're getting started. I've already installed the latest version of Node. It's currently 14.18. Um, which is linked conveniently. I just did the Mac installer. It installed Suite. Um, no surprises. Um, I'm because we're having a little bit of issues, I'm going to write, I'm like, uh, no, I'll go back and forth between the terminal and the patience. And how big is that? Can you see? Oh, let's get rid of my name in the lower left-hand corner. So you can actually... See what I type show names. If I were a show names or not show names indicator, participant names. Bam. Okay. So there you go. So it says make directory root. Oh, I should probably show you where I am. I'm just in my default directory. App and then CD into it. There's nothing in here. Um, I am just following the blog post. If you'd like to follow along, feel free. Um, it says, let us create our new Node.js project by doing npm init. Dude. You will be prompted for some information on your project. In this case, we can leave everything default except we change the entry point to app.js. So default, enter, version 1.0.0, enter, description, sparkling kittens. 
I know it said everything default, but I'm a rebel. Sorry. Not sorry. So not sorry. Description is always sparkling kittens. Entry point. This is the part. See, this is why you don't mess around. It's because then you forget what you're doing. App.js. Test command. Leave it blank. Get repository. Leave it blank. Keywords. Leave it blank. Author is me. Leave it blank. License is ISC. What kind of license is that? Hmm. Create the file that will hold the code for your app. Oh, pay attention. Is this okay? Yes. Uh, touch app.js, which just creates a file in your... So that package.json was created when I did the um, npm init. And then the uh, app.js is just a blank file. Um, so there's nothing in it um, if you open it. That's it. By the way, I use Vim, not Emacs. Sorry, sorry, not sorry. Pew. <laughs> <laughs> when I think about you, I touch up JS. Yeah, right. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, <laughs> focus. Okay, so we're relying on the express.js. Ooh, I found a typo. That's okay. Framework for our app. So install that now. NPM install Node.js Express. So I'm actually installing Node.js and Express. Uh, and also I forgot to put the M at the end, which I did this before. Nah, I'm a rebel. Yeah, okay, so what is the I think this License? Should I have just retyped and put Apache? I am a rebel. Okay, we got a notice, create a lock file. I should commit this file in GitHub. Noted. Uh, no repository field, so it's it's basically freaking out a little bit. It's like, where's your repo? <laughs> um, it added 51 packages. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. I wonder if I just installed that for this project. <laughs> it's fine. All right, let's add some basic code to app.js that we will build on later. First, let's set up our main function variable to call the express module and require it as a dependency. Then let's define the port and host express needs for its output. And then it's got this, I've got you. Okay, Raymond, next time we're doing this, Apache-2.0. This is a minor detail. When we upload it to GitHub, we'll totally do it proper, but I could have done it by default. The more you know. Okay. Um, so then I just, what is the name of it? <laughs> Typing is hard. Oh, look, we have so many new things. So it says, finally, we connect to our specified host and port and output the console via expresses app.listen. Note that this app.listen code should remain at the bottom of our app.js file so as not to conflict with other asynchronous code in our script. As we make additions to the file, keep this code snippet always on the final lines. I know, it's so white everywhere. I, yes, shush. All right, so this app.listen is going to be at the bottom. And we're going to be like, keep this at the bottom of your file, Leander. Okay. 
I know. I know. Thank you, Adrian. Like there's supposed to be a way within terminal. Where's my turn? There it is. My shell. Isn't there like edit background color? Whoa. Is that better? Are you happy? Are you happy? The things I do for you. <laughs> Hi, Jesse. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good enough. It's getting there. Okay. So I guess this is a bit of a vim. This is not much of a vim help, but once you've edited a file, um, press escape and then call in uh, WQ. Um, so now when I cat the file, it shows everything that we did. That's what I was doing before when I catted app.js while it was um, empty. Okay, so now we're going to play with... <laughs> I'm so wait, Dracula theme? Oh, because it's Halloween. Okay. <laughs> Aside. So we just moved back to America from the Netherlands where we lived for 10 years, my partner and I. And while we were over there, we had three kids. One of them was born the 25th of October. He was actually due the 1st of November, and Halloween is like my favorite holiday ever. So I completely was like, okay, so on the 30th, I'm going to start eating super spicy food so that by the 31st, he's a Halloween baby. Ba -ba! I had all these plans. And then like basically my blood pressure was like, <laughs> and he came a week early. Um, <laughs> thank you. Exactly. So basically, like anytime there's an excuse to dress in costume, to put on dress up and makeup, to eat loads of candy, to play tricks on my friends, that's me. So one of the biggest things, biggest reasons I was excited about moving back to the States from the Nether love the Netherlands, but there's no Halloween. Halloween is a very American thing. And um and so, like, when the oldest school was like, we have this thing, you can sign up for boo bins. And it's where they basically you get surprised by a bucket full of candy and Halloween stuff. And then you need to, you take this stuff out and then you fill it with other Halloween candy and, and surprises and you go sneak it on to the next person on the list. And, and I was totally like, uh, yes, and signed us up almost immediately. And so even though I knew it was coming and today's October 1st, even though I knew it was coming, I cannot tell you how big of a grin I had when I saw that we were boob first. Um, and it's out there right now. Like, don't go get it yourself, Leander. Don't just wait. Cause I want like, I want the, the minion, my firstborn to find it and get, and like get his surprise and all this stuff. Like I'm, I'm seriously ludicrously excited about it. maybe like, maybe he'll see it and he'll be like, that's nice. I'll be like, what's wrong with you? Um, but, but yeah, I'm super excited about this. He'll be home like soon, but we're going to do this stream and then, and then I cannot wait. So, so that, <laughs> so yeah, probably during these October, uh, I think I should, I think I should, Adrian, do you dress up for your Halloween streaming, for your October streaming? Do you dress in costume? I'm waiting. 
Adrian is a colleague of mine here at Cockroach Labs, and he is also a streamer, and he will be streaming it. I want to say three. <laughs> exactly. Or or suddenly the candy will all disappear. Trust me, he is not eating the candy uh, before I am. Um, um, and Adrian's streaming at four o'clock today, casual coding Fridays. And yes, you've totally dressed up. So that's the thing. I've totally also dressed up. Um, yeah. So this is happening. October. Let's celebrate. This is one of the reasons I'm such a fan of Hocktoberfest. Focus, Leander. Let's get back. Okay. So the next steps in the blog post <clears throat> are creating your cockroach cloud database. And so I need to switch back to the web browser. Okay. Picture and picture people. So create a free cockroach cloud cluster. Not there, there. Hmm. Cloud. You can see what I log into the most. This is my GitHub account, um, not my employee account. <laughs> Words are hard. Um, and then does it just want me to, yeah, just create it. Okay. Well, we know what we're doing. We're totally changing that to sparkling kittens. Yes. Do, 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 do. Okay, but seriously, y'all, um, and I'm just copying this over to my words are hard terminal. <laughs> Since we've established the screen kind of pukes, I will do this. Ta -da. And that's downloading the, um, the file, the um, CockroachDB client. Remember your password. This is your um, OS password. And then download the CA cert using this command. And then I should probably copy my password into an, another location because I might need it in a bit. Let's open let's just really quick um this. okay so that's the uh, oh that's brilliant I should do that. Adrian is smart. Yeah, I should totally paste it into chat where it won't be forgotten. Absolutely. Well, that's the thing. Like, I'm I'm creating this cluster, but then I'm totally going to delete it. But it's just a free cluster. So, like, it's got a 5 gig limit and a 10 million query limit. But, yeah, I'll, I'll put it away. So I'm connected, I'm in my database, then I go back to, let me just read the rest of this blog. Um, not the rest, but let me continue in the blog. After creating an account, download and install CockroachDB client in, on your machine. When it's installed, we can now connect via the command line to create our new database, which we've done from the cluster page, Click the connect button at the top right to get your CockroachDB connection details. The connect page is displayed. Download the CA cert. 
create a folder named search with within. Ooh, I did not do that. Glad I'm I'm reading. Download the CA cert from there. Create a folder named certs within the Roach app directory and move the downloaded cert certificate into here. Five gigs is a lot of contacts. It is. <laughs> Test in this size database. Oh, I should probably um, not be connected. Oops, from to the database. Wait, did I do that? Wait. Oh, I'm doing it wrong. This one. There we go. So now I'm local again. <clears throat> Not what I meant to do. That is what I meant to do. Okay. All right. Let me get that. Path. So it created, oh, interesting. I'm looking closer at, um, let me show you. When you first, so when you first um, create a cluster, it has this connection info that it shows up by default. And this is the only time when your password is um, provided, by the way. Um, that's my password, um, which by the time this, it, it'll be gone. But if you wanted to log in really quick <laughs> over the next hour or so, it's you're welcome to join me. Um, <laughs> exactly. And it's very easy to change. That's right. Um, so I just noticed this for the first time. It creates, for the CA cert, it creates a dot .postgresql, po, dot .postgres um, cert, as opposed to CockroachDB uh, location. I guess it's more secure. I wonder why they do that. I mean, I do know that um, CockroachDB is uh, Postgres wire compatible. Maybe that has something to do with it. But maybe if someone watching knows, they can answer. But that's interesting. Okay, so then my cert is, oh, let me switch because I'm, I'm about to do some hackery just to make sure. It's in the right spot. <clears throat> okay, so this is how I figure things out. <laughs> I'm just making sure basically that this cert actually exists where it says that it exists. So the first thing I'm gonna do is ls that directory and stop using Mac shortcuts. So there is my cert. So that's good. And then, and then let's cat it. Just see, let's see what it does. Just kidding. <laughs> Typing. Typing is hard. There it is. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Yeah, it's my user, which is Rain Leander. But I always want to make sure that it actually showed up, even though I literally just did it. I always make sure. I'm pretty. Okay, so it wants me to put in, so in the instructions, it says to move, I'll just show you instead of trying to describe it. It's basically saying, move your cert as opposed to copying it for some reason, but that's okay. To move 
my cc-ca.crt to the directory that I just um, just created. But then that will break my connection string because it'll be pointing to the old location, I think. Let's just, yeah, it even specifically is like, do you have your stuff in the right place? This is the connection string. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, hopefully they'll just kind of, yeah, exactly. No copy. Okay. Yeah, me too. I like copy better than move. I know, move. So, so we're copying. Oh, and I'm, you know. There you go. So copy the old cert to what do we call it? <laughs> Certs. So now it's in there. Yes, great question. So certs are different per cluster because um, it incorporates your new cluster name and possibly your new password. <laughs> I love the move command. I like to move it, move it. I like to. Today is a sing along, so that's where we are. Okay. So then it says we are ready to connect. Paste your updated connection string into the command line. Um, and it's got a long, long connection string. Is this even the right connection? I mean, I'll try. We've got, let's see what happens. I see connection string is cool, but not cool. <laughs> See, Raymond knows. He's singing along. Okay. <clears throat> Except, see, there's my sparkling kittens. My cert is in Certs. Slash, what did we just call it? Root.crt. Now that could have worked because I just copied over. It should have still worked. But I'm trying to do it the way it's telling me to, and it still worked. Okay, cool. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right, once connected, oops. <laughs> I know exactly. Thank you. What if I have multiple clusters? So exactly, one of the, like, this is delving it. So Adrian and I are both new to Cockroach Labs. This is, and maybe we have a Cockroach Labs watcher um, employee watching who knows the answer to this, but like, are the certs just per cluster and do you have to download a new one for each cluster? And yeah, like so many questions. Oh, you know what? I don't know if you can hear this, but I can hear that the six-year-old is home. And I can hear Papa. And I hope they don't notice that 
the Halloween thing is out front because I really want to be there. <clears throat> so anyway. So we're going to connect again. I've got all kinds of sounds around me. Let's see if that opens. That's the hallway. It's not a closet. Um, create database contacts. That's it. We've created. Oh, that's it. That's our database. We're not going to put any data in it. It's a blank database. Show databases blank, blank commands. I know there's, a, okay, I'm Googling it. Screw this. Okay, wait, don't I remember how to show the database, the data, the tables within a database? Why is that blank? Show. I'm pretty sure it's show. Show. Which doesn't even show up in a cheat sheet. Cool. Show databases. Show databases. That's it. Show databases. <laughs> Just making sure, I was making sure you were paying attention. I love it. <laughs> yes, you're right. Show tables for contacts. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Yay, teamwork. Okay, so that's it. And now the next step on the blog is connecting your app with Cockroach, connecting your app to CockroachDB with SQLize. Um, to connect our Node.js app to Cockroach Cloud, we use the SQLize ORM. SQLize makes communicating with CockroachDB simple. It enables us to integrate CockroachDB into just about any web app with minimal hassle. Let us install it into a new terminal tab. Ooh, good to know. Right? Go on then. <laughs> so our other colleague, Amruta, who did this blog post, she's one of the two um, writers on this blog post. She literally did a learn, learn SQL in 24 hours video that is just now up on her YouTube channel and it's brilliant. But I also have not all, like my SQL is better than my JavaScript, but still rusty. I should not admit that, probably. And so if I do a new tab with the profile homebrew, cool, it automatically, awesome. Well, let's copy this. Oh, Adrian has it. Ta da! And that's a winter rocking it. Okay. So then the blog post says connect to CockroachDB from inside your app.js file. So more stuff. So let's go back to our cockroach TV. I didn't get at this. App.js. Remember that one section has to be at the bottom. Da, da, da. No pressure. Ba, ba, ba. Ah! Nothing. It's fine. In order to go into insert mode, you need to press the I. You're getting to the edges of my Vim knowledge. 
we're gonna actually let's just keep that off screen okay so my username is that the user is that my sequelize username do i have a sequelize username Maybe it'll explain this. Update the path to your CA certificate to establish a secure connection. You also need to update the username, password, host, port, and database fields. You can find these details under the, oh my gosh, it's so good. Um, under the connection parameters tab in the Cockroach Cloud menu that provided your connection string earlier. <laughs> Aren't you smart for explaining that? <clears throat> okay. Yeah, exactly. So it's your SQL user for each app. That's smart. Hey, Jane, you're so smart. You should come work for Cockroach Labs. All right, blogs. And by blogs, I mean, okay, so, so this is the code that I just pasted in and should save while I'm remembering. And then it says that down below, it says to update the path to my CA certificate to establish a secure connection, which is the certs, nope, nope, stop it. Certs, nope, stop it. And it's not called cc-ca, it's called root, isn't it? Yeah, root.crt. So we did that. And then the connection parameters tab in the Cockroach Cloud menu. Hey, look, that doesn't exist. <laughs> uh -oh. These are my SQL users. Oh, K. Wow. My username is K. Noted. Lower. Okay. Uh, my password is that incredible long password that we just talked about, which I pasted into the temp file. Just this. Just all of this. Boop, boop, boop. Boop. There we go. My host, which isn't even on here wouldn't my host be <laughs> i'm asking this i just leak a lot of passwords yes thank you it's an excellent name okay i like it S straight to the point um let me show you what i'm guessing my host name is since it's not like the format doesn't is has changed. So that's good to know. It's good to know we learn something new every day. Um, I think this is my host. And this is my port. I think if you have experience, it's in the params tab. If you were a params tab, where would you be? 
in the cloud console, like all clusters. Is there another? Click connect button. Beep. Oh, right. Oh, connection parameters. Bam. Thank you, Adrian. Look, Adrian was saying all this. Click connect button. Go back to your cluster. He's the one that got me here. Thank you. Connection string, except for the password. Connection parameters, username, host, port, database. Thank you. You are so awesome. Hey, creature, wait, creature next. Awesome. Hello. Okay. So I'm putting in my host. What is this? Oh, conveniently has a copy thing. Thank you. Thank you. The port number is 265.7, and the database also has a copy. Not what I meant to do. Y'all should, y'all should be, I should be sharing the other one. It's hilarious how many typos I'm doing. I'll show you. Adrian knows creature next. Hey, Oscar. Velkoman. I wish it would share with my window in window automatically instead of me having to redo this every time. Picture in picture, I mean. Just saying. Happy. Okay. Okay. Is that everything? It, okay, so to be fair, the blog post was very clear. It was like, you can find these details in the connection parameters tab in the Cockroach Cloud menu that provided your connection string earlier. So in the Cloud Console, exactly where Adrian was saying. Oh, you guys are awesome. Totally should put my password into an environment environment variable. Agreed, 100%. But I'm not going to, because I'm a rebel. We've already established this. We also need to define the table, the database table we will use. Since we are making a simple contact list, we'll create a basic table with three rows, one for unique ID, one for name, and one for telephone number. All right, all right. And this is going to go below our connection section. <laughs> Welcome to IKEA. Provide your own hex screw. <laughs> I'm sure I could come up with a better comment there. Okay, so it's using SQLize and to actually create the table, um, which is a constant called people. SQLize is using the constant called people to then create the table. I don't see the reference to the actual, wait. The database is not sparkling kittens. 380. <laughs> Words. The database is not sparkling kittens contacts. It's contacts. Oh, but it does does it need the cluster name ahead of the database name? cluster.database. 
Because there's no other reference to the cluster, so it would have to need that whole thing. Oh, again, Adrian's telling me, answering my questions. Adrian, I love you so much. Also, would you like to just join me? Because I could send you a link in a heartbeat. Just say. And Adrian will be like, no, stop it. Do this, do that. <laughs> Love you too. Smoochies, boboochies. Okay, so then we're going to add data to CockroachDB with SQLize. Now we are ready to create our contact list. First, let us create an input form to send contact names and phone numbers to the database. To do this, we need, we use pug templates. First, install them. Also, save your file, Leander, npm install pug. Next, create a simple template. Make a folder. Mm -mm. Next, create a simple template. Make a new folder within the Roach app directory called views and a new file called index.pug. Okay. Yes, next time. Right. Thank you. This is happening. Adrian, do you want me to read that correctly? Back in my day, they were gauge templates. That's a little bit ageist. I'm older than Adrian, this is okay. <laughs> okay, focus, make the new views. It's there, CD into views. Touch, actually I don't touch, I film. Index pug. You know, one thing, this doesn't go into like how you should edit these files. It's just kind of like, you know, you be you, however you wanna edit, you figure it out. So I guess we're assuming a certain level of um, developer experience and using your own IDE or whatever you're comfortable with. I guess, I hope. Um, we're just gonna change a little detail and that is that the title And then the H1, maybe not all caps, um, sparkling kittens. That's cute. Welcome. There's a story behind that. I might share later. Now within our app.js file, let us set up the pug templates and generate our page. Oh, we are totally not. We would have to do that. <laughs> Ta-da! I'm, I'm guessing this is after most of the code that we've done, except for that section of the code that is supposed to be at the bottom. Because we're, get, we're getting to where we're just assuming. And we're just like, yeah, just put it in there somewhere. It would have to be after SQLize, after the connection to the database. Um, so that's where it's going. <laughs> nice, nice. So Adrian uses uh, VS Code. Yeah, I can also add autocomplete attribute of name to name with the autocomplete phone number to tell. Fair warning, it will autofill the details from Chrome to it. Noted. Raymond, were you the other author on this? No, it was Roger Winter. My brain was like, yeah, he is, because, no. Because <laughs> R. I love it. I love your ideas. Raymond, never stop. Um, How could you doubt my commitment to Sparkle Motion? 
I mean, look at these hands. Look at them. <clears throat> Live dangerously. Oh, don't fell from curl. You are a web developer. Awesome. Raymond, have you ever done this blog post? I would love to hear your thoughts, especially as a web developer. Have you ever played with Carpe Oh, wait, no, because at the very beginning, you were like, why is this better than Postgres? Fair. Oh, I hope, I hope that by the end of this stream, you'll be interested, curious, go play. Where was I? <laughs> okay, did I just put, I put, yes, I just put this in. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Me. We now have an input form, but it's not doing anything yet. So let us take the data from this form and add it to our contacts database. To do that, we need a little help from the body parser middleware to install it, npm install body parser. I could have sworn there was a brew install somewhere in here which is the whole reason I found out I didn't have brew on this laptop, but we haven't run into it yet. That's okay. Then require it near the top. What about the top? Why wouldn't you, why just near the top? Near the top of your app.js file. Yes! I sing the body parser electric. I magnify the beauty within. A host to my own reunion. Where I become one with JavaScript. I'll stop. We're done. We're done here. <laughs> If we're not going to do more stuff within this directory, I will CD out. JF. Okay. So near the top. <laughs> I hate vague commands. So probably... I know. Exactly. Thank you. Raymond's like, I doubt you're... I, this is not what he said at all. He said, you may have missed a section. I am nervous. I haven't missed a section, Raymond. How can you doubt me? I'm just kidding. It just says near the top of your app.js file. So. Yeah. Oh, maybe it should be above that section. Oh, enjoy your walk with Atticus. Could you snuggle him for me? The ears. <laughs> I went to the Detroit Ann Arbor Rochella, which is the Cockroach Labs employee regional grouping. And there was no Atticus. I was I was disappointed. It was amazing, amazing tapas. Now within our OJS, let us set up pug templates and generate our page, which we did. Uh, set up our pug templates, which are right there. And then now we have an import form, but it is not doing anything yet. And then near the top. So maybe we need to require this before the pug template. It makes me nervous when something is. Um, no worries, Raymond. We're family. It's cool. You be you. I don't know where you're supposed to be, so I'm just going to put you above the command that 
I just put in for some reason, except that's not anywhere near the top. It bothers me. Oh, oh, I have an idea. We can totally look and see what Amrita did. Sometimes I have the smarts. Sometimes. So this is Amrita's. And we're looking for, what are we looking for? What are we doing? Body parser. So her body parser <laughs> is right after the setup express. Um, and then call the body parser. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Raymond's got it. The, so the final code that they did for the blog is at the bottom of the post. Yes, Matt. All right, cool. So then it's just going. Her code looks different than mine. Oh, I see why. I wish I could give you a side by side, but the screen is weird. <laughs> okay, okay. In momentia. Por favor. Back to here. Okay, so they're basically saying to put it approximately here. And then this is why I was confused. I'm going to put that, which was, you know, not there. So I hadn't put it in there. Okay. Now we're ready to handle our post data, insert it into Cockroach DB via SQLize. Does this also go in my app.js? I assume it does, because handle. does it uh, it goes kind of towards the bottom oh we're almost done with stuff okay yeah awesome we haven't even gotten to Heroku where we're gonna deploy to handle submitted form data wait yes and don't go slowly and okay, let's just make this bigger. Ba, 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 ba. There. Let me put this. Down. Here. But not at the bottom. Ba, ba. Okay. So still don't trust myself to. All right, reading data from CockroachDB was SQLize. We are now able to populate our contact list with names, phone numbers. However, for this to be of any use, we also need to fetch data from CockroachDB and display it to the user as our contact list. Once again, SQLize and CockroachDB make short work of this. I like how I put that. We begin by creating a pug template to format the output from our database. In the views folder, create list.pug. Why, why did we do that one npm install in the new tab, but I haven't done any of the other npm installs in the new tab? Why did it have me do it in a new tab? I don't know. Uh, in the views tab folder, create list.jpg. And add the following. Uh, it's very important for this. Oh, 
also, this is the wrong length. There we go. Am I freaking out the screen? I am freaking out the screen by changing the other stuff. Now within the app.js file, we fetch the information from CockroachDB, send it to our pug template. Create a page that lists our contacts, blah, blah, blah. And I just want to make sure in the page that are already in the database. Okay. Interesting. So on Amruta's, this section actually was above. Um, not only that last section, but also above. So we would have to go below the pug templates. Right? Yeah, it should. It should. <laughs> okay. All right, we're on the deploying on Heroku. Wish us luck. And finally, we will deploy our app using Heroku. You may be wondering why did we didn't simply use Heroku Postgres for our database if we're ultimately deploying on Heroku. While Heroku Postgres is helpful for many applications, it does not provide a relational database built for scalability. CockroachDB does. Hey, answering Raymond's question from before. And I answered it the same way. So good job, Leander. To deploy your app on Heroku, you need to create a free Heroku account. After logging in, create a new app and name it Roach App. Now, this is where brew is, isn't it? Yes, this is where my brew stuff is. So download the Heroku CLI and Git. So if you go over here, it totally uses brew, which is how I figured out that I did not have brew installed, which is there. And it will just be like, you already have it installed. Why are you being weird? Unless it, oh, it's gonna update homebrew. Nice. And it, it says it's already installed. I know, because I'm smart. And then how do I log in to Hadoku? So it says, wait. Create a free Heroku account, which I did on heroku.com. Yeah, and I'm already logged in. Whoa, I'm going to show you this. Ta -da. Oh, yeah. Also, I may have shifted the window slightly so I could read more at once. Is that better? That's better. There we go. Did it just go fuzzy? Please don't go fuzzy. Okay, good. I'm not throwing up, you're throwing up. Uh, no. Got it, yes, got it. That's fine. Wow, this is old stuff. This is very old stuff. Wow, okay. So I do a new app, which is called, what does it want me to call it? <laughs> Roach app. <gasps> no, why? But I want it to be, um, fine. All right, let's not forget that. You gotta help me. 
Reaching up, one, two, three. We've done it. Downloaded that, open, and change the host and part variables that I set at the beginning of the, I know, Sparkling Kittens app. It totally should be Sparkling Kittens app. Why didn't I do that? Since we're, we're naming it Sparkling Kittens. Uh, let's go back to you. We can spell, I swear. All right, we're calling it Sparkling Kittens. You can't tell me what to do. Okay. And then we do this stuff. Picture and picture default, please. Okay. It wants me to open, and I set these at the beginning of the tutorial. Okay, got it. And it's basically changing it from pointing to express to pointing to Heroku. which I didn't change. So I'm just going to do this. No. So it's going to the process the, the port assigned by Heroku. Nice. And then I'm guessing I need to comment these out. Yeah, Raymond's with me. Thank you, Raymond. Okay. And then open the package JSON. And add the following. Right to the bottom, I hope. Oh no, scripts, got it. This is the scripts section. Oh, now I can show you my other, the rest of my knowledge. Um, so you can press DD to delete a line. <laughs> so that is all of my Vim knowledge. I don't know how many spaces those are. It's probably standardized. Where's my programming with JavaScript person? They could be answering these questions. Is this standardized? Engines is not in here, but we put it right after scripts. So then we just copy this. There we go. Create a file simply named proc file with no extensions in the root of your Roach app directory. Remember, it's not called Roach app, it's called Sparkling Kittens. Thank you, Manir. Wait, am I in? Yes, this is happening if we need to. It will be a quick. So this goes just here. Oh, 
I see. And we're actually going to do stuff with it. So. And it says just to add the following inside your proc file and save it with no file extension. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. With a space in front of it. What's wrong? What's so wrong? I'm taking, I took it out. I'm a bad person. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. And I'm logged in. Bam. Okay. And then let's log in. All that's left to do is create our Git repository and deploy it to Hedoku. I wonder if Git is installed. Okay. <laughs> Ruins all Git. We learn new things. So now. <laughs> So Raymond's showing me another thing that I know how to now know how to do three things within them. I am dangerous officially. Dangerous. <laughs> I know. So that's the thing. It's not like, does it not care about um a couple of things. So one, does it not care about capitalization? Because it specifically said that we were supposed to create the application on Heroku and it was supposed to be called Rochap, all lowercase. And then this one says to clone the directory, which we have done. Um, but we obviously need to rename it to uh, sparkling kittens. That's not what I meant to do at all. See me go up, make direct. Can, is there a way to rename a directory? So I don't have to rename directory Mac terminal. I've never renamed a directory. Oh, it's going to make me move everything. No. But I should just be able to. Yeah. Yeah, Adrian's telling me exactly move into the same directory. So what I do like, to do recursive, to, yes, something like that. Are you in your recursive? Okay. Uh, so it just moved my. 
stuff within Rochap to How do I move everything inside of RoJap into Sparkling Kittens directory? Now the first command didn't work. The first command failed. Remove Sparkling Kittens. Why do we have to remove sparkling kittens? We'll remove everything inside of sparkling kittens. We don't want to remove sparkling kittens. It did work. Man. All right. So let's try this again. We'll move all of Roach out to sparkling kittens. Put it, it put itself in a folder called itself. My brain hurts. Wait, is this the part where I fall <laughs> where I fall apart and cry hysterically? No. I tell you what. Let's just see if this even works. Not what I meant to do. Okay. Mm, that's new. Yeah, exactly. Adrian's like, just fix it in Finder, you dork. I mean, Adrian didn't say that. So this is where I show my awesomeness. I am better at command line than I am at Finder because I came over from a Linux place. And that explains. Find her. Yeah, okay. Let me figure out this command. Okay. The requested API endpoint was not found. Are you using the right HTTP verb get versus post? And did you specify your intended version with the accept header error ID not found? Did I stretch too far? Did I fall so low? Okay, no, but seriously, where's my, I don't even know how to find this on Finder. I can get to downloads and I can get to my desktop and documents and Finder and that's it. And 
All right. Don't freak out. Nobody freak out. All right. You ready? Probably should not have been in this. <laughs> so I just renamed it. Okay. Ta -da! Okay. Thank you. And the terminal. Open. It's sparkling kittens all the way home. Hi. We are hacking things in Node.js with CockroachDB. So good to have you with us. Shatrugan. Shatrugan. Yeah. Open dot opens the current directory. Oh, that is so awesome. Okay, that's cool. Learn something new every day. All right, let's try that command again. It might be happier with Heroku get sparkling kittens. Maybe. No. Error ID not found. Am I still logged in? Yeah, I'm logged in. Let's try it again. You see me? Oh, not that. Damn it. <laughs> okay. Now I'm logged in four times. This, yeah. <laughs> Learning is fun. Demental. I'm feeling dementalness. It's Friday, Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. Okay. Oh. Okay. Let me show you some stuff that I just figured out. Look at how smart Hadoku is. It's like, this is how you do it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna ignore the blog post for a minute and follow these instructions. We did the login. We're in the project. We did not get init. So that's something we didn't initiate our branch and then do the Heroku get uh, remote. Oh, we definitely do not want to have that. And we want to do that. That. Cool. That's so much happier. Okay, so the blog post is slightly wrong or ID 10T could be anything. I like the ID 10 T. Oh, and I'm totally not even showing you my the right thing. It's working now. It's happier. Okay. Then get commit dash am the message. Um, it's committing all of what we just added to the uh, get commit and then the message is going to be make it better um, according to get or Heroku's instructions then get push Heroku master and it's pushing it all up into Heroku git Boom, 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 boom. So found a little, another slight flaw with the blog post. I'd be interested, Raymond, especially you, if you wanted to go through the blog post and let us know if, yeah, I experienced the same thing or no, Leander, that was totally <laughs> not my experience. Oh, so it failed to push some 
refs to the repo. I wonder if we can open that. Method not allowed. Okay. So it won't let me open that directly through a browser. Okay. And that's it. Our app should now be live on Heroku. Oh my God. Heroku open. Uh, no, not quite. Okay. Let me show you what it did. So the app exists, uh, but it's not quite running, right? Because in the, in the browser, it says, now you're good, head up, go open. You should see a page like this one and put your name and phone number, which is the app we just built. And instead it has, you know, this is the default for building an app. I wonder if, we can see our code through here somehow. Yeah, let's see what our build box says. Unable to parse package.json. On line 13, it has an expected separator between values at line 13. Yes. The whole thing did not even go up. All right, let's get, let's get terminal. Wait. Let's get physical. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. That one's way too high. Let's get terminal, terminal. I wanna get terminal. Oh, it may be because of our um, rename. No. Oh, yeah, name, Roach app, ta-da. I don't even know what that key was. I never pressed that before. Are you holding your breath too? Oh, line 13. Yes, there was no comma. Yes, Raymond totally caught that. Cool. Yes. You are correct. Also, that wouldn't have worked because I did a change to a file. So then I had to recommit and re add. Please hold. Uh. Yeah, it's the comma. It's totally the comma. We start comma. Boop, which is also missing from the blog post. But I wonder if it's at the bottom of the blog post in the big. Oh, that's the app. Okay. Stop playing around, Leander. Focus. All right, so we can't just push. We also have to add, where are those awesome instructions? Deploy, probe get, yeah, get add. Get add all, get commit cam, frickin' comma, get, uh, I 
it's thinking. <laughs> Done launching deploy to Heroku. Y'all. Y'all. You ready? Because I already saw the, the answer. Uh, we did it, y'all. Or at least I should say we did the first part. We, um, the first screen. Let's see if it actually, you should see a page like this one. We do. Okay, type in some contact details and submit them. All right, Clark Kent. Okay. Clark, no, Raymond, Raymond Lovitz, which is 555, five, 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 five. Admit. <gasps> Y'all. Okay. I'm not crying. You're crying. To review the contacts in the list, navigate to slash list. And me, five five five. We live in the same area code, right next to each other. Seven zero three four. Submit, and it's not a very good user experience. <laughs> <laughs> Raymond's like, stop giving away my phone number. Don't you want fans? How are your fans gonna find you? Adrian, you're supposed to you're totally getting Adrian? Wait, Adrian, what's your last name? It's Adrian. It's Adrian. It's Adrian. And he also lives right next to us. So no. Five, six, apparently six. Okay. And then let's see the list if the list works. Please work. It does not work. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if this data even made it into our, yeah. So, so then the blog post, oh, uh, but I'm showing the blog post. So as we've seen, adding CockroachDB's robust relational database to your Node.js apps is painless. Moreover, with help from SQLize, any web app can take advantage of Cockroach Cloud and other Cockroach DB services. Can your web apps benefit from a bit of Cockroach DB integration? Sign up for a free cluster and get experimenting. Your only limit is your imagination. And apparently connecting to your database. So I bet this is where the fun part of debugging is because we have to figure out where we've referenced Roach app as opposed to Sparkling Kittens, I think. And uh, and fix that file. It's going to be somewhere, I mean, uh, <laughs> obviously. The first thing we can do, actually, let's go back to that window. The first thing we can do is, uh, there we go. So our connection parameters are still there. We literally copied and pasted. I don't think we're going to be able to see. Um, I think we should just connect to our database and see if the table actually has anything in it. So now we're, we're at troubleshooting phase, which is fun. And remember, Oh, come on, share the terminal. You can give it, come on, go on then. I have a lovely accent. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have these files and 
one of the things that we did was specifically copy and paste our connection command because sometimes I do things very insecurely, but it works. Okay. So then let me check this table out. Okay, I just basically want it to show me that table or show me the table. So do I just do show, show databases table? Did you all hear that? Select all from context. Where could do that? Relation context does not exist. Wow. Well, that would be the full database. All right, that one doesn't. Need, okay, so. SQL show all tables command. Oh, list. That's it. So we want it to use contacts and then show tables people. It's a public table. Okay. Um, select people. Select all from people. Zero rows. Okay, so this stuff isn't getting in there. Okay, so we know that even though the um, website says confirmed that it's not actually sending the data to the website, but we know that it actually created the table within the contacts. So part of, part of it's working, part of it's not. Um, Press wrong code sequence. Mm. It just changed the logging to true. I don't even know if that's available. Then we would look at the logging within SQLize. Oh, there it is. This is where it actually creates the table. And the ID is start with an integer. Put a name, phone number. Maybe this should be above this. Maybe I should take a break and eat lunch at 1.30. Yeah, the table exists, exactly. So the table exists, but then we need the pug to submit 
the data. Oh, here, here we go. So then, it takes the name, from name, return people that will create. This is SQLized stuff. Put the phone number. It's catching the error messages. So then we do need the Um, la, 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 la. We do need logging to be turned on because it, it would, it's not collecting our error messages, which theor, I, I mean, theoretically. This is down a rabbit hole. I'm sure it's an ID10T <laughs> as well. Um, error. But I tell you what, though, I I need to eat, so I'm gonna let you go. And also, um, Adrian is going to stream at four o'clock today, in ninety minutes from now. Um, and he's going to do casual coding Friday or I don't know what he's working on today, but I think he's still walking his dog. Well, I'm going to let it go for now. And then if I figure it out offline, I'll come back and I'll show you what I did. But for now, I'm going to go eat and then I'm going to show a six-year-old's magic because um, there's a Halloween boo bin on our front porch and I can't wait. Um, I stream every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. I don't think I'm going to continue because I don't want to go over to Adrian's, but I'm going to hack offline. And then if I figure it out, I will definitely show you next Friday. Um, yeah, because I have hunger. I moved eight. I moved eight. Yeah, so we will figure this out because uh, I have another thing that I totally want to do next week. Next week, we're going to work on a blog that is about um, Marvel characters, and it's written in Python, which is my wheelhouse. I feel a lot more comfortable in Python than in JavaScript, but it's been fun. I remember a lot of JavaScript just from this experience. Raymond, I totally want to see, get your thoughts on, on what happened. Like, do you play with this? Are you going to play with Cockroach TV now? I want to hear it. Um, and many thanks for everyone who showed up and yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you in a week. Thank you. Bye.